So I'm going to make a house using SketchUp and I figure that for simplicity's sake I'm going to make a very very small house. This particular house shown here is a model created by tumbleweedhouses.com. They make very tiny houses and uh, these are, are pretty complete and so they uh, offer many of the uh, structural and utility elements that we'd be working with except that it's tiny. How tiny is it? Uh, according to the floor plan it says it's 15 feet by 8 feet. It sits on top of a trailer. The road height is 13 feet 5 inches. It has a bathroom 4 feet by 2 feet. A loft 3 foot 8 inches. The main room is 6 by 6 and a half feet kitchen four by four and a half feet. So as you can see it has uh, all the comforts of home and so we'll try to use this. So we're going to start in SketchUp and what I would like to do is make a rectangle that represents the overall size of the house which is uh, 15 by 8. So I'll use my rectangle tool, index it to the origin, begin making my rectangle I'm making a highly asymmetric rectangle so I can see which dimension is the short one, the first one is, and so I'll call that 8 feet comma 15 feet there. And this rectangle is going to be a guideline really for the rest of the model. And so I'm going to first uh, use my dimensions tool just to lay down my two dimensions, 15 by 8. I'm going to simply highlight the whole thing. Now I've selected the entire rectangle, its borders, and also the two dimensions here. Right click and make it into a group. I'm going to use my Entity Info window here, and I'm going to give it a name, which will be Main Floor. And I want to put this group into a layer the layer I'm putting it in is floor plan. Although in truth perhaps I should put it under civil. Well, I'll use floor plan. So, the reason why I made this a group, you click it once and it highlights everything in there, is that when I make any other objects, like another rectangle, that rectangle will not merge into the geometries of my floor. See, as you can see, if I were to take another rectangle here and put them together, then they will actually intersect one another. And if I try moving one part, it's going to drag the rest because they, they've they merged in. Now that I have my main floor, I want to make some other things. I need to have the rooms. And what we know from the, what we know from the floor plan is bathroom is four foot by two foot and the porch is three feet by seven and a half. I'm going to call that three by eight and so on. So let's make some other floor plan elements. I'm going to call this the main room at six feet comma six point five feet there. I will put in some dimensions. I'll highlight the whole thing make it into a group. Under Entity Info we're going to name this group Main Room and we'll put it under Floor Plan. Leave it there. I'll make another rectangle. This one is 4 feet comma 4.5 feet. This is our kitchen dimensions. Make it a group, kitchen, and floor plan layer. Uh, we have a bathroom, which is four feet by two feet. Let's call it two feet by four feet. That's our bathroom.
right click, make group, bathroom, the lair is in floor plan. We need a porch. This porch is three feet by, I'm going to call it eight feet. I'm going to call it eight feet by three feet. Sorry, comma three feet. There we are. Uh, eight feet, three feet. Make it into a group. Porch in the floor plan layer. So I think I have everything now. And now I can set these here on top of the main floor. So for instance, uh, this porch will be on the border here. Our bathroom lives in there. Our kitchen needs to be rotated and lives in there. Our main room here goes in here. And as you can see, there's a lot of empty space. Okay, so what accounts for this empty space? It's the fact that we haven't added any walls. These dimensions really are just the usable floor space within each room, excluding the interior and exterior walls. So, I need to add some guidelines to the walls. But first, as you can see, all these dimensions are kind of confusing, confusing. So what I wish to do is change their visibility. I'm actually going to create a new layer. I'm going to call it dimensions. There we are. And within this group here, I can edit the group and highlight my... Move that away. Shift click. Highlight both of my dimensions here. And I can change what layer they're living in. They're living in the dimensions layer now close the group. So now what happens is if I change, turn off visibility for dimensions, those dimensions disappear. If I change my floor plan visibility, everything disappears because the individual dimensions, dimension objects, are still part of this overall group and the group belongs to floor plan, while the dimensions themselves belong to the group and to dimensions. Yeah, it's confusing to me too. There, there, entity info, dimensions. Close group. Same here, we'll edit the group. we are. Now we can turn off our dimensions. So, how are we going to account for things like uh, interior, exterior walls, and so on? Uh, one thing we need to know is how thick are interior and exterior walls? And interior walls kind of easy. Interior walls are made up of a 2 by 4 which is 3.5 inches wide, plus uh, let's say two sheets of drywall, one on either side, uh, that's uh, half an inch each, and so the whole thing is four and a half inches. That's an interior wall. Exterior walls can vary depending on what they're made of. Some exterior walls, for instance, have two by sixes instead of two by fours. Some of them have a lot thicker material on the uh, outside, um, 
along with the half inch uh, interior uh, sheetrock. I'm going to use my tape measure tool and I'm going to draw a guideline here and I'm going to call it at 8 inches. I'll pull another guideline here at 8, one over here at 8, and those are going to be my exterior walls, 8 inches, which is a bit thick. Let's see how that works. So I'll put my bathroom there. I'm going to put my kitchen up against here. And so now I have this very thin interior wall. How thick is this? I'll use my tape measure tool and it's two inches. That's a bit too thin. I would like a 4.5 inch interior wall. So it has to be like this. So how big is this then? This is five and a half plus eight on the other side. That's thirteen and a half inches, which is kind of a ridiculous thing. Let's call it let's call it thirteen inches. Um, that's um, a six and a half inch thick wall. Okay, so we'll redo our guidelines here at six and a half inches. around a little bit. So, what is this space here? Five inches? Five inches. Okay, sure. I'm going to call interior walls five inches thick, which is a little thick for an interior wall, but I can live with it with a six and a half inch exterior wall. This is our porch. If I pull this in 6.5 inches and then move my living room there, how thick is that space? That is five inches. Well at least there's a certain level of consistency there that all around my interior walls are five inches thick. I can live with that. And what is this space here? Perhaps it represents these closets. Or, actually not a closet, a um... Perhaps it represents a... the writing desk counter that is on this side of the main room. So this is the layout uh, for my tumbleweed house floor plan. And next we'll go into uh, setting up the interior walls and modeling the walls in 3D.